Hey, Cider Crusaders, welcome back to our special Brainwashed Marxism in Schools. Let's first start off articulating how bad it is and how much of this Marxist ideology has made it into your kids' and grandkids' school curriculum. Let's start with Jonathan Butcher. He's at the Heritage Foundation, former education director at the Goldwater Institute. Jonathan, how are you, brother? I'm great, thank you. Good, good to talk to you. So, where do we start here? How bad is it? <laughs> what, what, how, how much Marxism is in our curricula right now? Well, it's an ongoing challenge for parents and families around the country, as well as school boards, to be watching for how their local school is being influenced. Uh, a recent example of this would come from the New York Times last summer when they released a project called the 1619 Project. And now this was something that was dedicated to the idea of rewriting history. And not only was it a segment in the New York Times Magazine, but it was also created with school curricula in mind and is now already in classrooms. So it's, it's something that's with us all the time. It has been with parents for generations, uh, that we have to be aware of what our students are being taught in school. Big picture, and we'll get to some specifics in a second, but it's amazing that we're at this place now where I, th I think most parents just take the path of least resistance and I don't know if they assume the best or don't even think anything probably and just drop their kids off and uh, I don't know, just that's the end of that. Uh, and there's no, very or very little, very little at all parental involvement. Um, how dangerous can that be? Well, the pandemic is changing that as we speak. Yeah. And I think one of the things ushered in by the quarantines and the closure of physical school buildings is that now students have been home with their parents. The parents have been able to see what their students have been taught because a lot of the, you know, nearly every school around the country has had to do it online. So parents uh, now have uh, come front, uh, uh, front and center with their child's learning each day. And that puts them in a, uh, a great, you know, they have a great opportunity now. So when students go back, hoping you know that they do, they will be able to say something to a teacher or they will be able to say something to a school about what is before their student every day. So that's, I think that's uh, a significant change. I mean, never before on such a widespread, um, across such a widespread, you know, part of our society uh, have parents seen um, what's before their children. Yeah, I've read, I've read a couple of articles of parents overhearing some different lessons that made the parents say like, whoa, 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 what, are you, what are you learning right now? Uh, and also hopefully parents are rethinking even the idea of dropping their kids off at a public school. Um, and I hope we see a, a major influx of, of homeschooling. So let, let's go to uh, some of the worst lessons that are being taught in our schools. Um, you know, you mentioned 1619 Project that America was founded on slavery and the first slave, all that, which is brutal. Um, what other lessons are you particularly troubled by? Well, I think there are three big areas where a, an idea like this that I think is not built on sound history can impact the world around us. So there are education implications, there are social implications, and there are political implications. And just quickly to run through each of them, I mean, yeah. education we've talked about because it's in schools, but here's the thing, back in March, the New York Times actually issued a correction to what was in the 1619 project. Now, it's all well and good for the newspaper to do that, but when the material is already before students in schools, approximately 4,500 classrooms, much harder to go back and fix you know, that material that's already been distributed. So now you have something that was not, I think, uh, uh, the, the advice from reviewers was not uh, taken by the Times at, at the time that it was released. Okay, so there's one, right? And then in terms of social impact, well, for those that were watching the riots over the past couple of weeks, there was a statue of George Washington out in Oregon that was toppled during some of the riots and 1619 was spray painted on the side. It's a clear nod to what the Times had, um, had put out there through this project. So it's already now making its way. And the difficulty is that 
you know, one, they've issued a correction already, so we have some uh, historical validity issues that are a problem, but then two is the overarching issue is that America can only be defined by the mistakes of its past and not be defined by the potential for upward mo mobility and the potential for um, better opportunities for everyone in the future. Wow, that was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.